here we are once again. I've been pretty absent this last year, but finally in the last minutes, the long-awaited end of the year post actually came, just as I was about to leave home to celebrate New Year's Eve. If this video comes a bit late, you know why. I have to find some time to script and edit during my vacation, and in fact I'm also working on another video that might be done by the end of January, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's talk about what matters for now. The news and all the new teasers. Right off the bat, we're greeted with an image titled Mega Hub V2, depicting a hub with doors. Each of a different color out of the ones we've seen a lot in all the teasers we got so far, the primary and secondary ones. I've talked about theories regarding these colors before, and really it's undeniable how big their presence is in this update. Even in some of the next teasers we'll see in this video. So we can now assure they're very important to the game lore. This specific teaser got me very hyped because it somewhat correlates to a theory you had a long time ago, back when the crystals were first shown. In which I thought that you would need to gather each of these crystals to open the gate that would lead to the final boss of the update. I might have talked about it in the previous video. And this really feels like a room in which you would need to gather different keys to open each of these doors. Those keys could in fact be the crystals. This particular image has a lot of theory crafting potential, so I'll let you come up with your own theories about it in the comments. For the first bit of text, Corba mentions how 2023 was their most productive year yet. And as mentioned before, the scale of what they were creating grew far beyond their expectations, adding more and more stuff that took their time. However, now they finally turn the corner and can encouragingly say the end is in sight, as they have a clear list of what to finish until it's complete. I know that we have heard it before, we even got the tentative release dates in 2022, and that now leaves the community somewhat hopeless when hearing that development is close to an end, but as a matter of fact, the more time passes, the more we get close to the actual release date, and the devs have definitely learned a lesson from their failed attempts at guessing, so I'd say we can expect it to be released by this year. My personal guess is around July, when the summer holiday is in the Northern Hemisphere, so that would be nice for most of the community. I would personally love it to come as soon as February, but it seems highly unlikely to me. After some lovely words from Garba, a sword named Dragon Sword is shown. Even without a name, you could easily guess that this sword is related to the dragon you saw in the first progress post. Either by the color palette, the two dragon heads, or the crystal under the handle, which is the same in the dragon's tail. This is one of the coolest looking weapons we've seen so far. I personally think it's going to be a rare drop from that one dragon. Either way, melee players are definitely gonna want to have it. In the sequence, Spectre writes about the development of Fantastic Frontier, his personal perspective and how he has been affected through this year. First, he mentioned how proud he feels of the game they managed to create and the community that formed around it, stating that's what fills him with determination to make FF the absolute best it can be. Back when the game was first released, there was barely any advertisement, so it grew pretty organically in popularity, which eventually made them realize that community engagement and advertising are important things, although Spectra has personally struggled with this part over the years. Knowing the expectations of the community for news on game development, he felt somewhat anxious about the player base possibly losing interest or growing impatient, which led to the creation of the Peak of the Week series, that he now feels was a bit half-hearted from their side, and done largely out of the fears mentioned before. Over the past year or so, Spectre has better come to terms with these anxieties, accepting that it's better to focus his energy towards doing his work the best way possible, in his own way, rather than trying to please everyone and eventually damaging himself and the game. Lastly, he expresses his gratefulness for the community's patience and understanding, and hopes that we'll continue to trust him and Gorba as they move closer to finally finishing the update. Proceeding with the post, we have this image of a book named Guide. A lot of theories were brought up regarding this one too. Some people think that this book might be the Itempedia, with each of the colors representing a page, being those in the side, the ones you have right now, and those three in the front possibly being new Itempedia pages. If I remember correctly, Spectre confirmed in the past that there will be at least one new Itempedia page. So considering they also already confirmed this update is more than double the size of the current game, I wouldn't doubt that three more pages of collectibles are coming. Also, the dice could represent the RNG aspect of it, so that reinforces the theory. I would personally love this. You already know I'm a completionist, so you can be sure me and a lot of other players will spend a lot of time figuring out how to get the new items and try to fill these pages as soon as possible. Some also theorize that it can be a book containing specific information about the collectibles, like what are the sources to obtain these items as well as their rarity. Basically an itempedia, but with factual relevant information besides the items you already have and the ones you need. Another detail I noticed that I didn't see anyone else mention is that the symbols here are the same that appeared in those weird figures, shown at the last teaser posted by Garbicelli on Twitter. This could be a case of assets being reused, but I like to believe there is a reason for their specific forms to be there, instead of them just leaving that space empty. Going on, Garbo comes back to talk about how they had a lot of ups and downs over this year of 2023, 
and although they got a lot of content finished, they also had many personal struggles. He personally felt very affected about failing to deliver the update sooner, which made him eventually let himself rest and crash completely, declining his work for some time. But eventually he was able to let go of the stress and this turning point was like a boost for him to start working again to finish this update once and for all. It's always good seeing the devs being sincere with us. No doubt that this long journey has been tough to them, so it's really nice to see them confident about their work, despite all the obstacles they have to face. I'm sure that although we've been hyped for a long time, nobody wants this work to be harmful for the devs. The community's reactions whenever we get any sort of news shows the amazing support they have, and I personally feel very happy to be a part of this lovely community. So as I do hope Spectre and Gorba have a good time and get their deserved profit and recognition for their work. After letting their heart talk for a bit, their post becomes way more objective and they talk a lot about upcoming features as well as showing some teaser images. First, we get this. This image is probably one of my favorite teasers so far. It confirms something that has been massively theorized since some teasers depicting apparent caves were shown, which is underground exploration. It's actually funny how similar this update is in relation to the current game to Zelda Tears of the Kingdom in relation to Breath of the Wild. If you play both games you'll know what I'm talking about, and you probably noticed some aspects of it already. Talking about the image itself, it's named Gux Fight, so we can assume this pterodactyl looking creature is called Gux, and can maybe be a mini boss of this area, or just a regular monster that can be found in the underground. We can also see what looks like a collapsed bridge, that leads to a big door with pink symbol encrypted. Also, this part of the wall is shaped like a face, which is something the devs love to do. This armor set worn by a player is quite similar to the hardened bronze set that is currently in the game, so it can either be a redesign of that set, or a completely new one that just happened to be very similar. In the same fashion, this looks like a regular ore rapier. I wonder what material it is made of, since we already have a bronze one. Otherwise, the only other thing that I could notice is this ladder in the background, that looks oddly out of place. It seems somewhat too big for the player to climb, but that can be just because of the angle of the image. Tons of intriguing things to look at here, but I really like the design of the Gux. It seems that a lot of the new creatures from this update will have the ability to fly, so I wonder how melee players are gonna deal with them. As Gorba writes right under the image, the update isn't out just silent in the sky. Indeed, we will also venture deep underground, exploring massive dungeons overrun with monsters, and many other new types of environment far beyond the frontier. I love the emphasis on new dungeons, since that's something I know a lot of adventure game players enjoy, and FF has a lot of potential when it comes to adding this sort of challenge. Big fan of these additions. He then says that these areas will all be filled to the brim with their own new collectibles, characters, monsters and bosses. And so we get a glimpse of two new collectibles, presumably. One that is clearly inspired on the GameCube controller, the console Spectre grew up with and played many games that inspired Fantastic Frontier. I love the details on it, like the frog and red boy figures and the primary and secondary colors we've been seeing a lot once again seeking it to a teaser. Also we should probably come up with a name to define this group of colors, since they appear so much. We know they are related to classes, and the original three are referred to as frontier colors, but we don't know for sure how this relation will be presented in the update, and all the things this color represents in the game universe. So I'll let you give me some suggestions. The other collectible shown is a seahorse, named... Water Cat? Surely an interesting choice of name? It's most likely gonna be a new fish for the Itempedia, and that's pretty much all I can tell about it. Then, some more text, saying that they are excited to share some more details, but they want to keep most things a secret until the release, so we have a lot to discover for ourselves. Again, they reiterate that whenever the update is completely ready, they'll give a couple of weeks before the release to focus on advertising and building up hype. Also, something that really caught my eye is their interest on maybe doing some stages of beta testing, as it seems with players. We don't know how the beta testers will be chosen, but I'm pretty sure a lot of players would love to help the devs making this update the best possible, and that is a great way to integrate with the community. So we'll definitely be looking forward to that. In sequence, a few more images are shown. This time I'm quite confused about what they're supposed to be. The first one is named Spore, so I guess it can possibly be a harvestable item, as big as it seems to be, possibly one of the rarest in the new areas. Again, the primary and secondary colors and those weird shapes are seen. We've been seeing the same symbolism being used more and more each teaser, so the devs definitely want to show they're important. The other image shows something called Plana. I can't say for sure what it is, but personally it seems more like a creature to me, possibly a friendly one or even an NPC. But knowing FF, I can discard the possibility of it being a harvestable or something completely different. The use of the symbolism mentioned previously in this one is particularly interesting, since it has small squares of all the colors we've been seeing, except for purple, which is its main color. So presuming it's a creature, 
There are possibly one of these for each of the six colors, and they seem like some kind of friend, maybe even a guide for a journey to obtain the crystal of that specific color, following my theory about the crystals. Also, that one weird bent triangle form is seen here too, so there's definitely something special about it. After those two images, Gorba states his intentions to be more active around the community, to keep us updated during this final development time, while Spectre intends to be more reclusive. So for the next months, if you want to talk to one of the devs, Gorba might be your best bet. Getting to the end, we have images of three more creatures slash collectibles and no oh boy do they look silly. First we have this frogfish or whatever, whose name is simply Imposter. Just a regular fish with a silly name. Next there is this creature called... Creature? At this point I'm not really sure if those file names are their actual names or just placeholder, but let's pretend they are. The creature is silly, I love them. Best edition ever. Even if I'm not sure if it's gonna be a mob, a monster drop, something like the running man, I don't know. It's just a creature and I love it. And then, the best teaser image we got so far. Girog. Or Girog. Gyrog. Gyrog. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but I love him. It's just goofy and that's it. Full of personality, just how I like. No matter their function, it's undoubtedly a great addition to the game. Thanks, Spectre and Gorba. To end the post, Corbus says goodbye and wishes us a happy 2034, as we get the last teaser of the day in the form of another amazing armor set, just like we're used to see. This one is named GH Armor 2, so it's probably a reskin of another set. So far we got more than 20 new armor sets shown to us. Considering that they only show a small part of the content to be added, I can't even conceive how many options of equipment they're going to have in this update, not to mention all the weapons we've seen so far. I feel like we now have a lot of different meta builds, which is great, since in the current game, although there are a lot of great options, Forgotten Life meta still dominates. It's actually crazy how they can spend an entire year barely providing any new information and we're still gonna get hyped the moment we have a word from the devs. This shows how much they can achieve by communicating and being transparent with us. Each message from them gets the community together to discuss and theorize. That alone helps building hype and getting more people to the game, so I definitely see a benefit in this approach. And I believe most of the player base likes to feel closer to the developers. Anyway, that's it for this progress post. I really hope that they get the update done this year. It's been a crazy ride already and honestly it's amazing that this game is still somewhat alive, considering how Roblox games are generally encouraged to have frequent updates to stay relevant. It shows how Fantastic Frontier is truly something special, a gem in this platform full of simulators and cash grabs. That's why I hope it all pays off in the end and the game gets really successful. As much as part of the community likes gatekeeping, I feel like getting recognition will be good for the game, the devs and, of course, content creators like me. Hope you all enjoyed the video. I'm currently making another one that only the beginning, hopefully it comes out to the end of this month. Until there, let's wait patiently as we've been used to do. Thank you for watching and see ya!